too hard. <laughs> these, these are kind of aesthetic. They're new. They're newer, but they're kind of cool looking. As you can tell, they're in the shape of M from McKinley Mall. Mm. She's probably at least 70 by this point. Yeah. I am Madam McKinley, and I look into your future, and I see more stores closing. Ah, yes. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sal and this is another Expedition Log. In this episode, we conclude phase four of the X-Log with a Zamaya Mall from 1985 that overcame decades of stiff local competition from Walden Galleria right up the street. It saw some morbid press after a horrific event at Sears and then survived COVID only to fall into the hands of the greasy edgelord, Mike Kohan. I hope you're all doing great out there, having a good time all the time, gearing up, for the holiday season. Also, if you find yourself into my content, I would appreciate it if you could please just take a moment to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for all notifications. I've got some great content coming up in phase five of my series, which is going to debut very soon. So please make sure you're subbed and following me on all of my social media so you don't miss anything. Links for everything are down below in every one of my descriptions. Today, I'd like you all to come take a walk with me and my good buddy Ace through the McKinley Mall up in the Hamburg area of Buffalo, New York. But first, a word from our sponsor. The incredibly campy and also incredibly serious topic of workplace safety, as covered in promotional films from the 1990s. Enjoy. Sometimes, even the best of days can suddenly end in disaster. The usual causes are beverage spills, dropped food, oil and grease from machinery, leaky bags or containers, materials tracked in from outside, and the wrong kind of wax or floor cleaner. So instead of slipping, most people are actually tripping. Unauthorized riders frequently fall from the lift and are... When Freddie Jones discovered the key in the switch, he decided to go for a joyride and quickly lost control, crashing into the break room wall. Oh my gosh, Fred, is he okay? No, he's not okay, he's dying. I'm so sorry. Damn you, Uncle Scrooge. Everything's in fashion this Easter season at McKinley Mall. See the exciting Shades of Spring fashion show with the latest in spring colors and styles for you. It's in fashion at McKinley Mall. And bring the children to see the Easter Bunny. There's fun, fashion, excitement, free gifts, and more. And it's all in store and waiting for you at McKinley Mall. McKinley Mall. It's in fashion. It's in fashion at McKinley Mall.
Welcome to the McKinley Mall, with footage from back in September of 2019 when Ace and I took a walk through this place. I'd like to jump into the historical narrative for this mall to see exactly what happened over the years. It started as a Zamias Mall pretty successfully. It defended competition from Walden Galleria, saw a renovation, survived COVID, but it still wound up in Kohan's hands. How did that happen? Let's dig in. Back in 1980, residents in the Hamburg area of Buffalo, New York, received word that a giant new mall would be coming to their area. And on November 3, 1981, there was a referendum vote on whether or not this new mall project could move forward. The vote was to swap 18 acres of reserve parkland next to the proposed site for a like amount of land owned by the developer who was the George D. Zamias Company out of Johnstown, PA. George's son, Damien, who was also the VP for the company, would head the project. He would oversee the whole thing for this mall. Following voter approval, the town board gave Zamias' company one year to begin construction. By March 17, 1983, the projected $100 million twin anchor Super Mall was still not under construction following a string of six-month court-approved extensions. Zamias was stalling on the project because long-term mortgage interest rates at the time were pretty high, and he was just waiting for them to come down a bit before he would start construction and firm up the financing for this project. By February 2, 1984, Zamias had announced a May 1 target date when construction would begin on the first phase of the mall. Down from the original estimate well over $100 million, by this time the project was now anticipated to come in at a more conservative $50 million with two unnamed anchors, a food court, numerous retail stores and services, and a movie theater. Hamburg town planner George McKnight was quoted saying that the first phase of the proposed mall on McKinley Parkway would be about the size of the Eastern Hills Mall. I've actually got an episode coming up on Eastern Hills in phase five, so please subscribe and stay tuned. As with most new malls, changes would also come to the community at large. While the Hamburg locals were generally not stoked at the idea of a huge new mall bringing so much traffic and change to their quaint hamlet, the mall would bring two to 3,000 new permanent jobs to the area, along with several hundred building trade workers employed during construction. In the months leading up to the construction of the mall itself, Zamias was trying to make the project as painless and simple for the local community as possible while still being transparent about the process. His firm paid upwards of $1 million alone on land acquisition, market and traffic studies, site engineering, an environmental impact study, legal and architectural fees. They also put aside $1.5 million to contribute to the relocation of Mile Strip Road, which needed to move to make way for the mall. This dude did his homework, and I truly respect that, in contrast with some other developers who we'll talk about a bit later. Finally, on Thursday, July 12, 1984, the groundbreaking ceremony was held for the new mall in Hamburg. Looking out over all of the earth-moving equipment on the site, Hamburg supervisor Jack Quinn described the project as, quote, the cornerstone of Hamburg's future, close quote. Going on to say that this new mall helps the Hamburg area of Buffalo to visualize a reality out there, pointing at this equipment. George Zamias was also at the event, next to his son Damien, and the senior Zamias went on to say, quote, This groundbreaking today is held to pay tribute to all who helped over the past five years to make this day possible, close quote. Sounds like these boys were having a pretty emotional day, but the mall was finally under construction after way too much ado. After about a year and a half of work, the grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremonies were held for the McKinley Mall at 10 a.m. on Friday, November 15, 1985. The mall featured bold lighting accents, dark brown tiles, fountains, and a split-level food court called the Skylight Garden. Serving as senior anchors was local chain AM and A's, which stood for Adam Meldrum and Anderson, and what was described as Western New York's very first Sears of the Future. This brand new Sears concept was part of a $1.7 billion expansion program to build 62 of these updated futuristic Sears stores. There were still just Sears stores as we all know them, but for the time they got some big upgrades that weren't normal in most of their other non-futuristic stores. Merchandise was consolidated in two departments rather than scattered all over the store, and customer service systems were installed to cut the purchase time in half. This was around the time that department stores were beginning to embrace technology and the new age, and Sears was at the front of that revolution. 
Zemias pushed for the second phase opening of McKinley, and the mall saw a few additions in the late 80s. One year after opening, the mall gained a general cinema movie theater with six screens in 1986. Then on Monday, August 15, 1988, an L.L. Burger opened as the third senior anchor, and the following year, Sibley's opened on Thursday, April 6, 1989, as the fourth anchor for McKinley, completing its second phase opening. It was probably a good thing that McKinley was fully stacked with anchors by this point because a brand new mall was just about to open one month later. The Pyramid Companies opened the Walden Galleria on May 1, 1989, featuring six anchors and nearly 200 stores spanning 1.6 million square feet. This super regional mall was just 12 miles north of McKinley and had every ingredient needed to take down any of its competition. But McKinley would push on, pretty much unscathed. Sure, some traffic was lost to the more central southern Buffalo markets, but overall the two malls would exist in harmony. Then on Thursday, April 19, 1990, the Hamburg Planning Board approved site plans for a new JCPenney to be constructed at McKinley Mall. It was also in 1990 when Sibley's was converted over to a Kaufman's, as the chain had been owned by the May Company since 1986. Keep that in mind. The following year, in 1991, the entire Burgers chain closed after filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and the space was converted to a Kaufman's home store. It was also around this time that JCPenney finally opened as the mall's fifth and final anchor. Shortly after the JCPenney opened, news broke that Zemias was behind on back taxes for McKinley by about 2.6 million bucks, and it was giving Hamburg and Greater Buffalo some serious agita. So the best move for all parties involved was to dump Zemias and bring in their limited partner, Chicago-based Heitman Properties, to run the operation. By March 31, 1992, Zemias was demoted from principal partner down to limited partner, and Heitman was now running the show at McKinley. And by April 18, Heitman had paid the full $3.5 million tax bill under protest. By 1994, the Bonton Stores, Inc. had purchased AMNAs, and all stores were converted to the Bonton Masthead later that year. The ongoing feud between Zemias and Heitman was also gaining steam through the mid-90s. Zemias is best known for withholding tax payments right up until the last minute, waiting for courts to render a final assessment on property value in an effort to avoid overpaying. This was their MO, this was their specialty, and I can't blame them for trying to save a few bucks, but it did get them into hot water here and there. So Zemias fought like hell through the 90s and came back swinging with a new investment partner and bags of cash. In December of 1998, Zemias bought out Heitman's stake in McKinley Mall for $63 million with the assistance of their new partner, Goldman Sachs Whitehall Fund. At the turn of the millennium, McKinley Mall and the Walden Galleria were thriving, despite other Buffalo area malls that shuddered in their wake, such as the Thruway and Seneca Malls, which closed in the 90s. But McKinley had nearly full occupancy and five anchors attached in operation, and Zemias decided it was time to divest in McKinley, along with 13 other malls, in February of 2001. Goldman Sachs remained the owner for McKinley and brought on Chicago-based General Growth Properties, good old GGP, to manage and lease the mall. Two years later, the assessment for McKinley had fallen to $36 million, so Goldman Sachs decided to unload the property and found a buyer in PA-based Stoltz Management, who bought the mall for $48.6 million on September 3, 2003. In 2005, the mall began to undergo a rolling renovation that would be slowly introduced over the next year, so as to avoid disrupting business and customers. That same year, on August 30, Federated Department Stores acquired the May Department Stores company for $11 billion. The following year, McKinley began to announce the renovations, which included the addition of a Bed Bath & Beyond, a Best Buy, and several aesthetic changes around the mall. The Skylight Garden was simplified to remove the sunken eating areas, along with a new look to match the overall theme of the mall, which featured Frank Lloyd Wright-inspired artwork and stained glass throughout the mall, most notably in the center court around the clerestory windows. The entrances and signage were updated, along with modernized lighting and landscaping updates. As the multi-million dollar renovations were winding down, both Kaufmans at McKinley were rebranded and converted to a Macy's and Macy's Home Furnishings in the latter half of 2006. McKinley was poised for success going into the 2010s with a full anchor lineup, healthy occupancy, and a ton of businesses and restaurants insulating traffic at the mall along McKinley Parkway and Milestrip Road. 
Despite the devastating economic depression in 2008, McKinley Mall would come out relatively healthy, but would see the loss of several national chains. Through the 2010s, the occupancy would waver in and out between 80 and 90%, but that number would begin to fall sharply with the loss of even more national chains, such as Radio Shack, Gap, Hollister, and the Disney Store, among others. Seeing this mass exodus of quality national chains, Macy's decided to close their twin department stores at McKinley, shuttering both on Saturday, March 26, 2016, leaving nearly 150,000 square feet vacant in one fell swoop. This kicked off another wave of closures, losing several inline tenants and the Sears Auto Center shuttering in 2017. On June 15, 2018, it was reported that Stoltz Management was 30 days delinquent on a $35 million installment on their mortgage for the mall. With the declining occupancy rate, the recent loss of twin Macy stores, Bonton and Liquidation, Sears and JCPenney's closing stores at an increasing and alarming rate throughout the country, and Ulta moving out of McKinley to go to a better location up the street, you could probably guess what Stoltz was doing by this point if you've been with my series for a while. Due to their delinquency on the loan, refinancing the mortgage would be tough, and Stoltz was headed towards imminent monetary default. Bonton had finally closed on August 31, and Rialto advisors were brought in as special servicers to babysit Stoltz while they faded in and out of foreclosure proceedings. The mall was losing tenants left and right, and I showed up here with Ace on September 1, 2019 to film. But it wasn't until 24 days after I filmed this place on September 25, 2019, that things really started falling apart at the McKinley Mall after a grisly event went down in the very spot Ace and I are walking through at this Sears right now. Well, good evening, Jeff and Ashley. It remains an extremely active scene here at the Sears at the McKinley Mall, where a woman, according to Hamburg police, was stabbed to death earlier. I want to show you the scene over here. Over my shoulder, you can see Sears. You can see multiple Hamburg police cars here. Hamburg police say it happened here at Sears around 2 o'clock this afternoon. This 36-year-old woman and her friend walked in to the entrance and was attacked. The woman was attacked and stabbed in the children's department according to Hamburg police. Her friend was not. The 36-year-old woman was pronounced dead at the scene. Police are looking now for a male suspect that they believe has a connection to this woman. They say this man took off in a vehicle. All afternoon, we have watched the Erie County Sheriff's Department helicopter up in the air searching for this suspect. Just moments ago, I saw Hamburg police SWAT team convene here in this parking lot um, as they went into the store and then uh, dispersed on their own. Police have not released any additional details to who this suspect may be, but they say they have multiple witnesses. We talked to Chief Je Gregory Wickett earlier this afternoon. He said it's pretty chaotic inside the mall. A lot of people, even though the mall remains open, um, a lot of people are still a little bit on edge as to what happened this afternoon. Police do believe that this 36-year-old woman who was pronounced dead here after being stabbed at Sears is from the Buffalo Niagara Falls area. Sears has remained closed for the remainder of this McKinley afternoon. Again, Hamburg Hamburg has been out. suffering in recent years, like many area malls, with the loss of major retail stores, which eventually led that property to foreclosure. Now, a new potential buyer is on the horizon, according to our partners at Buffalo Business First. And tonight, Channel 2's Ron Plans tells us that the future of the mall is still not clear. This buyer is buying it at a bargain based on price. Actually, the tentative deal calls for the McKinley Mall, which is in receivership, to be bought by the Long Island based Cohan Retail Investment Group for $8.5 million, pending approval from a state judge. Member of Town Supervisor Shaw says the mall was assessed for $22 million just four years ago, but with the loss of major anchor tenants like Sears and Macy's and a 30% vacancy rate, it was down to $10.8 million and now a lower purchase offer. The pending sale of this mall creating a lot of uncertainty and downright unease for Hamburg Town officials considering the very mixed track record of this firm which is trying to acquire it. I am concerned that a developer has a long-range vision that is creative and has pockets deep enough to fund that vision. I don't know enough yet about this developer. I wasn't able to reach the Cohan Retail Investment Group founder and CEO Mike Cohan. The website mentions an emphasis on social gathering and shopping and focus on small, locally owned businesses. 
About one month after the fatal stabbing of 38-year-old Malisha Tips here at the McKinley Mall Sears, on November 7, 2019, the company announced that the Sears location would be closing the following year. I'm sure that the Sears at McKinley was on some sort of watch list for quite a while, but following this horrific event, it was probably best to just close down the store, and Sears was shuttered on February 16, 2020, leaving them all with only JCPenney as the sole remaining anchor tenant, with occupancy reported to be well under 40%. It was around this time in 2020 that COVID started forcing malls to close, and McKinley went into the pandemic with its own comorbidities and underlying conditions. What in the Mike Kohan is this? The mall would remain closed for a few months before reopening back up in July of 2020. Despite McKinley reopening, droves of tenants would remain closed, and by February 17, 2021, it was reported that only about 30 traditional stores were still open at McKinley, along with the JCPenney, and there were 11 non-traditional tenants, including an insurance company, a martial arts school, and a psychic. I am Madam McKinley, and I look into your future, and I see more stores closing. Ah, yes. And if you look here, we have the card of Leo. And oh, look at that, even more stores closing. Ah, uh, yes, the future is bright for McKinley Mall. Not. The most recent development for McKinley Mall occurred on July 28, 2021, when the mall was sold to the Lord of Cheap Mall Acquisitions and master of expediting the death of an already dead mall. That's right, folks. Mike Kohan bought the mall for $8.5 million against an assessment of nearly four times that amount. The sale was super controversial and done behind several closed doors and under many tables. Other firms really wanted to bid for the mall, but they weren't able to, including local firm Benderson Development, who filed an objection along with the city of Hamburg for the sale. And Benderson's argument was that they would have paid much more than the tawdry amount that Kohan's greasy empire got them all for. But the courts denied the objections. Kohan got them all for dirt cheap as he always does. And when he was asked what his plans for the mall were, he was quoted simply saying, quote, sometimes malls are beyond fixing but you can't always tell if a property will be a success story until you get involved. I'll do my best." Close quote. Now, I don't know, if this guy is on record saying this stuff over and over again, I'll do my best, you don't know if you can fix a property, how is he still getting money to do this? It boggles my mind, it really does. Considering what Kohan has done to other malls, I can't see McKinley pulling out of this nosedive. Chapel Hill Mall, the Esplanade, Stanton Mall, Tiffin Mall, Warren Mall, the list goes on and on and on and on. Kohan is the new Moonbeam because Moonbeam pulled out 
Moonbeam divested their mall venture. But Kohan is still in with so many malls, and he kills nearly every one of them that he gets his disgusting, stupid hands on. Listen, if you're a bank and you're watching this video, I need you to open those ears up. If you're considering giving Mike Kohan money to invest in malls, walk out. Get up, walk out. Don't do it. I'm begging you, the financial institutions, to stop giving this dude money because all he does, he buys the malls for cheap, he lets them die after doing nothing to save them, and he waits for the land value to improve, at which point he sells it for a meager, pathetic profit. To the locals, if any of you out there catch news of anything happening at McKinley, please let me know down in my comments or the Discord or Twitter or whatever, because I really can't see anything good coming out of McKinley from this point. And it's a real shame that at this stage in McKinley Mall's life that Mike Kohan is the one to own the mall. I'd like to thank all of you for watching my video, and I'd also like to send a huge shout out to my dude Anthony E for his continued help in getting me updated footage for my latest New York videos. Thanks again, Ace. To my patrons and elite explorers, you're the call that fires this machine called Xlog. Your direct support on Patreon and Super Chats and every other place you guys donate really helps my series along. If you're still here with me, and if you dig my content, which you probably do since you're still here with me, you might as well subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done it already. I've got a ton of new content coming. Really fantastic stuff is coming in my series. And my next episode is the 100th X-Log. The next video is going to cover a legendary dead mall that I got full access to, and it's an episode that you do not want to miss. I'll be spamming all of my social media with behind the scenes stuff and pictures and clips leading up to its release. So please stay tuned to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, my Facebook page and my Discord server for behind the scenes looks and updates for my series. Links to everything are all down in my description. I'm also going to plug Xlog98 since it was my absolute worst performing video to date. It's crazy how awful this video performed. I covered the abandoned Fort Armistead in Baltimore and it was a super fun Halloween episode. And if you haven't seen it yet, which I can guarantee nearly all of you haven't, please go give it some love. It's not a dead mall, but it's a lot of fun with me and my best friend Fritz. I'll be back soon with the Richland Mall in Xlog 100, which will formally kick off Phase 5 of the Expedition Log series. But until then, stay safe out there everyone. Take care of yourselves, and have a fantastic day. So instead of slipping, most people are actually tripping. Children to see the Easter Bunny. There's fun, fashion, excitement, free gifts, and more. And it's all in store and waiting for you at McKinley Mall. McKinley Mall, it's in fashion, it's in fashion at McKinley Mall.